Uh, welcome back to DXB Today, uh, right here on Dubai One TV. Great to have your company. We're focusing all things internet. It's internet day after all. So many of us, many of you out there, grew up in a smartphone-free world. The question uh, we want answered is, can kids have a screen-free childhood these days? Joining us now to debate this is Dr. Alison uh, Burroughs, professor at Middlesex University, parenting expert and founder uh, of Screen Wise Child UAE. Uh, professor Burroughs, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me. Very kind of you. Let's find out more about Screen Wise Child UAE. What are you trying to set out to do with the, with the platform and portfolio at the moment? Yeah, so we have three pillars that we're really trying to address. First, we are trying to get screens out of schools unless they are used in a way that supports meaningful learning. So no smartphones in schools, maybe tablets, maybe laptops if used in a meaningful way. Two, we would like children to shift from a screen-based child to a play-based childhood because the most important thing a child can do developmentally is play. Yes, yeah, so meaningful technology use in schools, no smartphones in schools, delaying the age of smartphone use till 14. Yep. And now we're thinking of shifting that to 16. So when should kids get their first smartphone? Mm. I'm thinking 16 years old, and that's based on the research, the research of how the brain develops, how the child developments, and all the dangers that are out there on the internet that a child cannot control. Thank you. I, I applaud you. Thank you so much for this because I think a lot of parents uh, get into debates with this particular subject. Mm -hmm. So having someone like you saying these things is very, very important. I honestly thought that schools adopted some of these things already. I'm, I'm surprised that you're saying it's not a thing. Yes. So schools do not adopt. You can have your smartphone in school and, it should, and it's fine. It depends on the school. Mm. So different schools have different digital policies. However, what we're finding now in most schools is that even if kids aren't allowed to have their smartphones on, they go into the bathroom to check their social media, or they hide it behind a book, yeah. or they find ways to use it. And even schools that have the best safety features, firewalls, kids still find a way to download VPNs and then get on either illicit or inappropriate websites and show images to friends. And they also get on social media mm. and are texting and what's apping, what's apping during class time. So these digital distractions are interfering with their ability to pay attention and their inability to learn. Wow. I'm a, that's, that's really frightening. I have kids as well, and I'm yeah. always worried about what they're looking at when they're at school. But something that's even more worrying I came across, uh, I re read this article in, in South Korea, where we have now kids using deep fakes to yeah. put the faces of their friends in school into explicit video videos and cyberbullying. So that's really like a new way of using AI to, to harm other kids that we've never seen before. I don't know how to cope with that, right? Like if you're faced with that situation. Yeah, well, a lot of parents want to build trusting, healthy relationships with their children. However, this goes beyond that. This is about safety. And at this point, I truly believe we need a multi-agency approach. We mm. need schools, parents, government policy, and tech companies. More than anything, the people who are responsible for creating these addictive algorithms to get us hooked to our devices, these companies need to put, put filters in place immediately, period. Well, Alison, what is, I agree with you on the multi-agency approach, right? Mm -hmm. And it needs to be a combination of all factors. But um, what is the role that peer pressure actually ah. plays into this? Because I can imagine a lot of kids might have the parents that are giving them mm -hmm. the screen time limit and the schools are enforcing it, but then they're around their friends and, you know, they feel a sense of being left out. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And that's a huge issue we're seeing with this is fear of being left out, which is why we're asking parents to collectively come together and not allow their children to have smartphones or be on social media until they're 14 to 16 years old, depending on the maturity of the child. So when families can come together collectively, yeah. when groups of friends can come together collectively, then your child is not the only one who doesn't have access yeah. Uh, some advice, if we can. I've got a number of parents watching, I'm sure, and a lot of, a lot of parents nodding away as well. 
Give us some sage advice for worried parents out there when it comes to limiting time. Because I suppose there's got to be that balance, hasn't yes. there, with your, with your children. You can't just deny completely. So, so what is your advice to them in terms of getting that balance right? Yeah, so I work as a parenting yeah. coach and screen time consultant and talk about this all the time. Number one, model. Model how you are using your phone, right? Your parents, your children, excuse me, learn from you. They're gonna do what you do. If you're on your phone all the time, they're gonna be on their phones all the time. They're also gonna think that your phone is more important than they are. Number two, moderate. Moderate the content. What are they watching? And three, teach them. Teach them meaningful technology use. Teach them how to interact on digital tools. Great advice. Yeah. Sage advice. Yeah, Thank I always you. say it as well to my children. It's just like, yeah, make sure it's making you money. If you want to go on YouTube, make like do a video and make sure it gets clicks and you get money out of it, <laughs> rather than just watching other people do things and play games. It's just crazy. <laughs> Thank you for being you. Thank you. <laughs> Well said, Lane. Dr. Alison Burroughs, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us on the show and for your very valuable advice that I think most parents need to hear but will be very grateful for. So thank you.